I'm out there. That's one thing about college. Even though I'm out there at college, I know I still have a support system back home. Some people go out to college and shoot, just try and make it out there and survive. I know my people just helped me out because they knew how stressful it would be for me to do school, go to work, and do football. They knew that it would probably just mess my mental up. So they they was like, man, they're going to provide some money for me. They're going to give me 100 every two weeks. And I just got to make some shake with that. So, and I was good with that because I'm like, sure, I'll be eating the cafe. And I used that for the, you know what I'm saying? I already paid my, my tuition for that. So I just used that for real until I, I really want something else like to call it or something. That's like $10. Do you think you'd be able to make it far without your family? No. At all. So my, my family is like everything. They they did taught me so much. Like, I wouldn't even know who I would be today if it wasn't for my, it wasn't for my father or my mother. They didn't taught me how to carry myself. And taught me how to be presentable. So, and I, I for, for that I'm never forever grateful. Choose off with when you're done. Alright, so how'd you get the scrubber? Yeah, just get the scrubber. Let's see. Let's see if this don't work. Oh, it's gonna work. That's funny. <laughs> Other times, so I actually wear. When you came and I saw you in the slippers, I was like, "It's like, dude, <laughs> how do I tell him?" <laughs> Man, I wasn't even thinking. I'm just like, I just gotta get here. <laughs> Who gonna tell him? Who gonna tell him? <laughs> Who gonna tell him? Now, at first, when I uh, knock on the door, I'm, I'm thinking I'm uh, at the wrong apartment. <laughs> I, said, I said, "Oh, uh, you said, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up." Hold up. My partner, who I work with, live here. <laughs> Start looking at the ceilings. I was like, uh, so he. Here. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, this building nice though. I ain't Thank you. Why? Thank you. I was like, when I first walked in, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, my exterior. I mean, we just moved in. So, what's the name of this sneaker? Uh, name of the sneaker is Adidas Q Star 13. I believe. Is this your everyday sneaker, your workout sneaker, your all right, I'm getting up into a sneaker? What kind of sneaker is this for you? This is my everyday running sneaker, workout sneaker, anything that's just workout related. I'm going to okay. use this one. I've had these shoes probably for like five years. What's the importance of having a good workout sneaker as an athlete? Um, as an athlete, I'll probably say just making sure you don't start busting out your shoes. Like, I know everybody's seen uh, Zion Williamson when he had bust out his shoes mm -hmm. in the game. That can happen during a workout when you try hard to go from sideline to sideline. You putting all you putting all your power in the stopping and redirecting. Next thing you know, you just bust out your shoes. <laughs> I had to have it in one of my shoes. That was, that was a bad case sad case. Would you say there's something comedic about busting out of your shoes? Yeah. It it, so. it, it it dang near feel like like Looney Tune kind of. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like like I really just did this. Like you gotta really like be focused like in the moment and really and really like use this. Yeah. And really have to like be so focused on like I gotta get there to not even really cut oh boy you good you good oh boy to really actually dang what was I talking about I have forgot I was I was uh, working on the next question in my head 
I said, is this your everyday shoe? Is this your workout shoe? Is this your get up and get to a shoe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is my everyday workout shoe. And that's oh yeah, he's talking about busting off the shoe. Mm-hmm. But that it just feels it just feels Looney Tunes because it only happens once in every blue moon. I know I know for me personally, it's only happened probably once, and that was in college. Tell me that story. Um, we was actually doing a workout, and. It's crazy because we was working out in the weight room for about a good 30 minutes with people slacking off. So coach was like, all right, bump that. We about to go outside. So we going outside, we get to running hills. We running hills, I'm like, damn. So I'm like, I gotta keep up. So I'm, like, I'm not trying to get a fat. So, Man, once I, it was like the third or fourth one I ran up. I'm like, man, I gotta push through. So I, I'm guessing I had used all my force because I was getting tired. And I just ripped straight through the street. Like, I'm like, Lord. It like banging the shoe, ripped the head. And that just, that just kind of shocked me. Right. So you're a college athlete. Mm-hmm. What's it like being a college athlete in 2024? Being an athlete now compared to back in the day, mm-hmm. I would say we have more control over our name and the money that the uh, colleges get from our name. So NIL deals? Yes. Okay. We we have more control over that power. Or over that, over that field, I should say. Has having that control been a blessing, or is it a two-way street for a lot of athletes currently? Um, I'd say it's it's really a blessing to be honest because mm-hmm. it just opens so many so many doors. Because mm-hmm. once one once you get one deal and people see how you do with that deal, it just opens up. That's like how people say when you get one offer. It just, you know, can open people's eyes up. Be like, hold on, I want this guy too. That's one thing I know. But in ideas, I know I haven't had any type of uh in nil deal. That's because I'm division two. So, and division Tell me the difference between division two versus division one. Division two, you can um. Well, yeah, I say for Division Two and Division One, Division Two, you more so have to work on your own and get your own image out there. Whereas in Big D ones, you really they really just get your name out there for you, like selling your jerseys in the in the store shops and stuff like that. And it just it just comes with stuff like that, like. the difference between a D1 and a D2 athlete when it comes to scholarships? In scholarship terms, with, with D1s, they can get full rides. Whereas, I know in D2s, you don't you don't get full rides. But I know in some cases where if you're really actually that good, mm-hmm. then you can actually be able to get a full, full ride, but you're not really supposed to tell anybody. Oh, really? Because it's more so people going to get jealous. Mm-hmm. And like, why he got that? Mm-hmm. Instead of like, you know what I'm saying, you have that. So, yeah. That's why was, we're really not supposed to talk about what we get from the coaches. But So each athlete is supposed to keep whatever scholarship they have to themselves. Yeah. Well, yeah, well they want them. They want mm-hmm. them to. But okay. they don't. But folks still don't talk. Yeah. 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 Folks still don't talk. Whatever. So. In any cases of athletes being a D2 athlete that's gotten a full scholarship... You said any case? Yeah. Um, not that I'm aware of. I know at, at my school, they just made it less of a burden. Like they probably only got to pay like a couple thousand a year. So I haven't, I haven't actually experienced that. Mm-hmm. 
also your school's in the middle of West Virginia? Yeah, 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 in the middle of West Virginia. It's in the middle of nowhere. And why why attend a school in the middle of nowhere? What was the pitch that got you in there? Uh, to be honest, the only thing that really got me in there, it was just being somewhere. I wanted to go somewhere new and somewhere I haven't been before. Okay. Like, tell me about the thought process behind that. Being, I mean, I've lived in Maryland my whole life. Yeah. So it's like when I had got the offer from them. It was just like, all right, it's like a, another chance in a different place. For, for. So it just made me like gravitate towards it because I've, I've had different offers from here. Yeah. But I didn't take it because I knew everybody, everybody in their mother was my brother. So do you think looking back, would you have taken any of those schools up on those offers that were offered before? Yeah. Uh, what school in particular? Uh, Bowie State. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What kind of um, what kind of package were they offering you scholarship wise? Um, they was gonna offer me a free ride, but they told me that I had to pay room and boarder. That's not bad. It's not. That's not bad. It's not bad. Because especially I, I could commute if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. So it's really like. But looking back at it, do you think you would have grown to become who you are if you would have stayed in the state of Maryland? Nah. I feel like I probably would have just met the same people that I've already known. Mm-hmm. I know I know people that go to Bowie and they say like shoot, they know people from elementary school that go there now. So yeah. It's just it's crazy. I didn't want to be in the same loop as everybody else. So that's why when I went out there, mm-hmm. shoot, I didn't I didn't met some new people. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't met some brothers out there that I could really call my brothers. Okay. So, and I feel like that was just for the better of my, you know what I'm saying, for my life to get, actually get out there and explore. Because I know I'm not done exploring. So. Would you say, how do you feel about your athlete experience so far? Because right now you're coming to the finish line, especially coming out of the pandemic. How weird was that for you? Oh, the pandemic was weird. I ain't gonna lie. It was just like, it was like more so like, what are we doing up here? We mm-hmm. only had five games. Yeah. But mind you, the five games were in the spring. Mm-hmm. So it just felt like kind of out of place. So you only had a spring, you never had a fish or football season going in the college. Yeah, during that time, yeah. yeah. But I, I've, I've had official football season. No, 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 I did that during the pandemic, so 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During the pandemic, it was it was no regular season. So, it was just like practice all day, every day. So, it was just, it was more so like repetitiveness without the, the football games. Yeah. So, it was just, yeah. How weird was it playing football you played football in 2020, or did, were you not allowed to play football until 2021? Uh, I played, but I played football, but I only got in for like two games, mm-hmm. and we only played five games. So, do you remember what year that was? Yeah, 2020. 2020. It was my mm-hmm. freshman year of college. Okay. Were there any regulations or anything else like that? Like, were football players playing football in mass? Like, what, what exactly was the deal? With the um. I think more so the deal was because so many people were getting like COVID, mm-hmm. so it was it was more so affecting schedules. Like we'll have a schedule, next thing you know, the whole team got COVID, and then we got like okay, now we got to reschedule. Yeah, we got to talk to the NCAA, all that stuff. Like we had to we had to get uh, test every every couple of days for uh, COVID. Did the NCAA provide you clarity, or was it kind of? Foggy on certain explanations of what it is. It what was. That to do? Uh, I don't know. I'd probably say it was more so like. Well, I'm, I wouldn't say that. I'd probably say because my coach was probably more on the aspect on what the NCAA was saying and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm just a towel to wipe it off. The sneaker and then the table. Yeah, my bad. I'm making a mess over this. No, 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 you good. You good. I was like, let me, let me, let me go. Jesus Christ. Oh, shit. I said, let me walk him through this. Thank you, thank you. No problem. 
But yeah, they um, it was more so they process, and it was oh lord, and it was more so like they didn't they didn't want like as many people to get infected as like you know, as that 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 did get infected because it was just it would just delay everything and it wouldn't be good for business you know they like money so yeah. As a college athlete, what do you expect out of your everyday sneaker workout wise? Out of my everyday sneaker, mm -hmm. um, I expect for my feet to be comfortable, my feet to be able to be molded in. Mm -hmm. no, nobody likes to be running with a uncomfortable sneaker. That's yeah. how that's how you get bunions. Yeah, and all that. Finds the bunions. Yeah, so I say having a comfortable sneaker and for the the. I need the material to be good so it don't get worn out after, you know what I'm saying, one week. Because we, we do some some bustling out that jump. So, you know what I'm You probably see uh, as these shoes, these jumps beat up from the flow up. They had an experience. <laughs> they had an experience. Oh, yeah. They've had an experience for sure. I say i never forget my freshman year where, man, it's, it's so much it's so much more strict than high school football because it's like, I didn't really understand until my coach told me, like, when we go up there, like, we're his responsibility. Mm -hmm. So we're dang near his kids. So whatever happens to us, shoot, he got to go back to our parents and explain what the hell happened. Why wasn't he there? Yeah. So that's why he, I, I understand Cause he be he be kirking off on us a lot, but I understand at the end of the day because we just responsible. So. Yeah. What would you say is your favorite memory from college going into your senior year? Uh, my favorite memory of college. I probably say this happened last season. This is probably one of my favorite memories right now. I was on the field. It was the first play of the game. Me and two of my uh my uh other side DN and my nose. As soon as he say hi, we all was in the backfield. We all grabbed the running back and slammed him on the ground. And we all just got up celebrated together. That John was probably like because it was like we started the tone off of the game. So, like, that feeling was so like that. And everybody was cheering on the sidelines. And we was like, yeah, we just getting started out this time. So. That sounds pretty nice. Probably my favorite memory. Do you have dreams of making it to the league? Yeah, I will say I did. I really did. That sense. Yeah, but as, as of right now, nah. I feel like I... I got more I can focus on. And I feel like if I was to go to the league, I would have to take it. I have to take it more serious. Well, I say I'm not taking it as serious as I should be if I if I really wanted to go to the league. Because people that be trying to go to the league, they sacrifice everything every day. So. Do you think you, you haven't given a big enough sacrifice yet? Oh, I've made my share, my fair share of sacrifices for sure, but I've had I haven't sacrificed enough. Like, for instance, D one players, they they stay up at at school. Like they miss holidays in on end. Like I miss my share of family trips, but we as D two we always go home for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. And this one more of them, yeah. Easter, I believe. And that's it. But for what's wrong for D ones? Sometimes they they have Thanksgiving at school or they have Christmas at school or stuff like that because they they working hard every day. They they don't get to have no break like that. And I I say D twos. We we've had chances to stay up at school, but 
it's more so like the school doesn't provide for us. So we're like D ones. They the school provides for them to stay up there, while D twos they don't provide for us to stay up there. So you on your own when it comes to being a D two. Yeah, you you on your own. But it's, it, I will say it's not as bad as JUCOs. JUCOs, you really don't know. When it comes to being a D2 athlete, how would you say the food treatment is? Um, I wouldn't say it's bad. It's just repetitive. Is it what everybody else gets, or is it specialty for you guys, food-wise? Nah, it's what it's what everybody else gets. Everybody everybody goes to the same cast. All athletes and students. So you wanna say it's just chicken sandwiches, burgers, sometimes you might get spaghetti and other times you might get like chicken teriyaki, uh, you know, and stuff like that. But after a while it just gets so repetitive, I'll be like, man, bump that I might go to Chipotle or something like that, you know? So I'm gonna give you two minutes to just let you clean the sneakers. Cause I may I'm thinking about making some ASMR videos out of this too. Of just folks clean the sneakers so we don't be quiet for two minutes as you do your thing. But. say making sure that you just don't be a yes man to the coaches like I say make sure you ask questions if something doesn't feel right like if you know something don't feel right in your gut you gotta ask questions and I feel like that applies to being an athlete too because you can't just I know you you can be like you know what I'm saying people coachable you be like yes coach no coach but if you say for instance you're in the film room and you really want to ask him like questions on certain things, and that's when you like you actually gotta ask him. I know some coaches 
they be like, when I'm talking, don't even say nothing, but just say yes, sir. But sometimes I can get out of hand, and I've, I've seen it actually get out of get out of hand. But like people, people have actually like, be like, nah, like I'm not going for none of that. Like you're gonna listen to what I have to say, because at the end of the day, we grown men, so you know what I'm saying you can't just try to disrespect me and then think I'm gonna let it slide. But, and at the end of the day, the coach is respecting him for that. So. You got no one to stand up for yourself. When is the right time? To? Prior to us having to sit down, you told me stories about a lot of athletes leaving the program that you're at currently. Yeah. What made you stay on with that team when you can kind of tell the coaches may not have the best interest for the athletes that are there. Um, I'm not even gonna lie. The only thing that made me stay there is so I can graduate and because I didn't want to transfer out. Next thing you know, I got to do another year or two because I transferred out of there. And then more so because I knew I was the next man up to, to start a team. So I'm like, all right. Might as well. I already did like two years under my belt. And they were saying I was just, they just going to have me starting. So I'm like, all right. So the next year I had started. And I was just rocking out. Because I know my goal was different from everybody else's. My goal was just to graduate. You know what I'm saying? Be a successful, successful human being. And provide for my family. So I'm a family man, personally. Tell me about your family. Uh, I have a big family, so I have, what, one, two, dang, like five nieces, five nieces and four nephews, so, yeah, it's, it's crazy, and then I got four brothers and three sisters, so, yeah. And I'm the youngest, so yeah, it's it's crazy. So, but at the same time, anytime I ask for something or anytime I need help, I got sources that did it before. So, you know, so that's why I, I feel like, even though I'm out there, that's one thing about college. Even though I'm out there at college, I know I still have a support system back home. Some people go out to college and to just try and make it out there and survive. I know my people just helped me out because they knew how stressful it would be for me to do school, go to work, and do football. They knew that it would probably just mess my mental up. So they they was like, man, they're going to provide some money for me. They're going to give me 100 every two weeks, and I just got to make some shake with that. So, and I was good with that because I'm like, sure, I'll be eating the cafe. And I use that for the, you know what I'm saying? I already paid my, my tuition for that. So I just use that for until I, I really want something else, like Chipotle or something. That's like $10. Do you think you'd be able to make it far without your family? No. At all. So my, my family is like everything. They they did taught me so much. Like, I wouldn't even know who I would be today if it wasn't for my, it wasn't for my father or my mother. They just taught me how to carry myself and taught me how to be presentable. So, and I, I for, for that, I'm never forever grateful. In your college experience, have you ever been mentored by somebody? Uh, let me think. No, not really. Only thing I probably say is the coaches. And the coaches just he was just been telling me more about more so about life and how football is not the last the last or the end all be all. Cause that's how that's how a lot of a lot of students up there be feeling, how a lot of student athletes be feeling. They feel like football is the the end all, see all. Without football, everything is meaningless, and it, it shouldn't be that way. So I would say that uh, my coaches, you know what I'm saying, 
they just help me see that more in depth. to help my team and be able to show them what I'm really capable of. This felt great. Like personally for me and I know for my family it felt great too. Because this year was the first well last year. Last year was my first start. So I had plenty of family members coming up there and it was just the best feeling for my people to come out and watch me play college football. Because, shoot, only probably about like two people in my family graduated from college. So, and I'm probably the only one that played college sports for my family. So, it was, it was surreal to see them out there for me. Someone who's bringing this chapter of athleticism to a close. What's two things you've learned from being a collegiate athlete? Two things I've learned from being a collegiate athlete. Okay. The first is you have to work hard every day. Every single day. Or that day you take off you're going to lose a good amount of your work that you was building up that whole week. So, or just that one good weekend can mess up a whole week, whole weeks of work, work that you did to build your body up. And for the second thing, I'd probably say always count on you in that. If you feel like coaches or being unfair or you feel like they are not holding up to their end of the bargain or they're not keeping their word then get up out of there because at the end of the day only you got you and you got to be able to realize that and once you realize that you'll be able to mature into a better person do you plan on taking any of those values into your real life of course because Without those things, without counting on yourself, shoot, you basically asking for handouts. I said. And I say, think about working hard every day. That goes with, instead of just football, that goes with just life too. Shoot, you take off, you take off a day of work, you losing money. So you can't, you can't do that. Especially when you got family to provide for. Oh, shoot. That one one day you miss, next thing you know, shoot, you behind on the bill. You like, all right now I gotta find another type of outlet so I can make up. Have you ever had to deal with imposter syndrome? 
Uh, imposter, what do you mean, like feeling, not feeling like myself? Um, feeling like you don't belong here. Yeah. Um, feeling like you're not good enough, no matter the amount of effort you're putting in. Yeah. Um, moments of long term doubt that start to play out in your habits. Yeah. I say. I for for a minute, I know for my sophomore year, I felt like I wasn't good enough to play football because at at certain well at that time I didn't have nobody. My bad. I didn't have nobody that I was friends with at that time because all my friends had left my freshman year. So I was being there coming in, not knowing nobody for real. I mean I knew a couple people, but it's like we never really hung out like that so it was more so I was starting fresh and it's just like man I'm trying to come up and get on the field the whole time shoot cause it, it was just a whole bunch of craziness so the whole time I just didn't have nobody that was really messing with me for real so and it just shoot, I guess just made me go harder and at that point, I wasn't looking for no validation from nobody. It was just more so like, sure, I'm going to do this. Do what I got to do for these eight plays. And I'm saying, get out. So, but the, the coach has seen that at the end of the day. Because they kept saying, they was telling me in the film room. Because I, I was on the uh, scout team. So they they, uh, they told me, they was like in the film room. They was like, who was this? Or right here, messing up our... I was messing up they uh what's going on? They first string. Okay. Yeah, so it was like they was like, man, he was like he's gonna he's gonna hurt them out there. So they put me on a they put me in a rotation for the other side. Yeah. Did you learn that grip from your family or has that always been there? Um, I learned it from my father, I would say. Because my father he um he went in the military when he was around 18, 17, really. Because he had, he had got uh, my brother's mom pregnant. Well, she, he was, she, was, she was pregnant with him. And that, that was like, man. So he was like, he didn't know what to do. Because at that point in time, he was just making sandwiches at the deli for money and stuff like that. So he was just like, all right. He was like, bump that. I got to do what I got to do. He was in the military. So, he went in the military, he did, he did his, you know what I'm saying, he did his do. He did 20 years. And he said, during them 20 years, shoot, he, he would party and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you have to take care of business. And business is the only thing that really, like, matters when you got a family. So I feel like I got, I got them, that kind of tenacity from him. Like, it's, it's okay to have fun. But when it's time to work, you got to put that work in. How would you say schools treat mental health? The athletes I feel like it has gotten better from what, it, from what it used to be because back in the day a lot of people didn't believe in mental health so they would just think like oh man you acting soft and stuff like that but now it's more so because they've seen the, the death rates or the death tolls is taking like it's more so it's I believe it's more so like athletes have been committing suicide recently and it's it's kind of sad because it's I can see like the the what I'm trying to say I can see the toll that it takes on being at a, being at a college working out every day like I ain't gonna lie I've had my moments where I've I've felt like what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? It's like waking up at 4 a.m., running on a 
running on the field that's halfway frozen. It's like, yeah, it makes you rethink some stuff. So, and I, I understand that, man. Well, I, I understand that people go through it more so than I have, because I've actually had to pick up some of my teammates. Like, yo, like you're gonna be good. Dude, some of them just throwing like temper tantrums in practice because. You know how it be. One person get in trouble, so we all run it. And it's like, man, you just got pushed through. Like, at the end of the day, the coach not worried about you. He's trying to see what the, what the dude who's in trouble is doing. So, you just got you got pushed through. But I've had my fair share of depressiveness in school. Or being depressed. Describe what that was like for you. For me... It was more so because at the time I wasn't playing in no games and I was just in the in the dorm room every day just wallowing away you could say isolated yeah just isolated going to practice damn there uh going through the motions you could say and it was at a certain point I'm like man just like I don't want to be here and it, it was just, it was just depressing at the point where I was, I was gonna leave out of there until, until my father, my father was just when I had came home, and it, it stuck by me like pretty, pretty firm. He was just like, man, he's like, I understand what you're going through. He was like, once you start something, you have to finish it, and anything you do. So I was just like, yeah, you're right. So. I just, I just stuck by it and just persevered. That's, that's, that's why I'm at today. So, and I thank him for that because when I was going through my depressive state, you know what I'm saying, I had to give him a call. Or like, I don't know if it was just the the dad senses, he would call me and I'd be like, what's up, Pop? And he'd be like, man, he'd be like, why are you sound like that? What's wrong, man? And I, you know what I'm saying, just let him know what was going on. So. It's just, I say yeah. Without my, without my father and my mother, nah, I don't even know. Yeah, what the world would be. So. Do you think if you would have decided to quit football, he would have stayed beside you? Yeah, because that's one thing that I've always appreciated him by. Because I know other parents, they be like, nah, I stick with it. Blah, 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 you got to do this and that. He was always more so, man. I don't care if you stop playing football today. He was like, as long as you get your degree, that's all that matters to me. So I, I've always, you know what I'm saying, cherished him for that. Because I, I know a lot of other parents, they put pressure on their kids to, you know what I'm saying, make it to the league and stuff like that. So I've always cherished him for that. Do you think other parents could do a, more, a better job of being realistic about their kids are as athletes compared to their dreams. Yeah, a lot because a lot of parents they don't have the guts to tell their son that they're not good at football. And it, I mean, I understand because their son is their world. But at some at some point, you gotta let him know what's reality because then he's gonna start. He gonna step out into the world. And just being being his own fake world instead of reality, I I believe. Cause it starts off it starts off young, and you believe you you everything you're hot stuff. It goes up all the way until somebody shows you that you're not. And once somebody show you that you're not the best thing to slice bread, then it's like hold on, like you've been lying. To me. It just it has a reverse effect and everything. Should I do the bottom? Sure. Sure? Yep. I see it's cleaning everything up. Yeah. Matter of fact. I know that's the reason I'm watching how I clean this stuff. Nah, it is. <clears throat> Alright, let me give it two minutes. Let you just go ahead and just keep brushing.
Especially when all of them was the uh, ticket, the golden ticket, you could say. That's people call themselves. So it's like when. What does it mean to be the golden ticket? Basically, when you, you can be the golden ticket is when you can get your family out of any situation or be the be the breadwinner of the family, really. Mm-hmm. So, and. They was they was right there, and what had to happen is just like, Lord, then if I just signed a contract with the Vikings before that happened, right? Mm-hmm. And the other two more schools they play at, that they play. One of them played at Charlotte, and the other one, he he was at Blue State, so he he played at Florida State. So he started at Florida, ended up at Florida. No, no, no. He was, he was at he was first at Florida. My bad. He was first at Florida. Yeah. And then he went to Blue State. Okay. So they still have some years ahead of them outside of the one that was playing for the Vikings of college sports. Yeah. I know. I know one of them. <clears throat> he he was fast. He was fast as a mug. He he. But yeah, oh, I forgot he went to Penn State too. Oh, he went to Penn State. Yeah, he went to Penn State too. So, and it was just I know because they was all they was all close close as a mug together. So they was they was the they was the face of my high school, but it's just it's tragic, man. It's all the schools that uh wise wise high school. It was just tragic. All all football players were just hurt. What would it been like growing up with them teammate wise? Teammate wise, oh, they was they was just goofy, man. They was funny as mud, always cracking jokes. And just off. Oh. Uh, huh? Stories for each person. Nah, I don't got no individual stories. Actually, I, I wasn't I wasn't as close to them because. You know, they was wide receivers and DBs, and I'm I'm a lineman, so. Yeah, positions. Yeah, so I wasn't really talking to them in practice and stuff like that. But I will say it was always funny to watch um, what AJ, watch him run, because he would always run half speed in practice. And we'd be like, <laughs> coach, coach would always get on, like, man, why you running half speed? He was always telling him, like, man, coach. He's too slow as a mother, like <laughs> running half speed. I'm faster than him already, so it's like that's that's probably one of my favorite moments. 
Was he right? Nah, he was definitely right. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> he would be running half speed and just be dusting people. So it's yeah. like, I, I don't even know how, how that's like <clears throat> genetically possible, to be honest. Run and relax. Basically, yeah, run and relax. Yeah. That's an art for It really is. One of my teammates, Jawan, he um he had that talent of being fast but looking like he's moving slow and running at speed. And he was actually my neighbor down the street from me. He passed away. Unfortunately, he was murdered about close to a decade ago. Dang. And he was actually the um, format that I used to get faster because I remember he said. If you ever want to run faster, you have to learn to relax your whole body as you're running. He said, mm. you're not going to get faster by becoming a big muscle that's firm all the time. You're going to get faster by relaxing yourself and demanding as much as you can out of a body that's relaxed. You know what's crazy? What's up? I, be- I believe that 100% because the other day when I was running mm-hmm. in the morning, or like 1-2 in the morning, I was running, and I seen like I was breathing, and I seen I was stepping to the ground hard as a mug. And it was like it was like kind of messing with my breathing. So I'm like, all right, so now I started like instead of stepping hard into the ground, it was more so like gradually like I don't know how to explain it. Just striking it quickly. Yeah, you yeah. can say, but not not as hard. More so like placing it and like pushing your foot off, <laughs> like For and sure. it was just Fine. yeah, and it was just so my my you could say my chest wasn't like going like crazy like because when I was just like stomping hard it was like one side would go this way and it was just like it was messing with my breathing so mm-hmm. like, you feel the explosiveness mm-hmm. you just feel like yeah because yeah because I, I was I was relaxed that was like, all right let me let me relax my legs but still go like, yeah. you know so that's crazy to say that it's real it's very real it's scary for real Okay. Um, how did the community come around the news of their laws due to the car crash and everything else? Uh, it was it was more so like I think somebody playing a prank on me. You know, it was like what in the world? Like how they pass? They don't do nothing. They just be chilling out the way. <laughs> so it's like when it happened, it was just like. Nobody could believe it until I went to the uh, the candlelight vigil, and that was when sure everybody started breaking down with that joint. I ain't gonna lie, I, I was breaking down. I shed a couple tears. It's just, it's just sad, man. supportive of their families since then or is it a mixed bag of stuff that's going on right now it's it's more so a mixed bag because I'm, I'm not too sure I'm not too close with the family so I'm not I'm not sure but I would believe that if they ask for support they'll get it 100 percent deal with that I say well I'll say I'll show you how I dealt with it when that happened it just you just have a coming back to reality moment and I know for me I just started hitting up hitting up my friends and stuff it's like yo like let's do something because you could never know when somebody's last so I just feel like that it made me more so become more self-conscious of like making sure I get in contact with everybody because I haven't been in contact with a couple people in a minute yeah it's crazy it's crazy
what's one piece of advice or two pieces of advice you give to somebody looking to play college sports? Uh, piece of advice? Uh, a piece of advice for college sports. Trying to think. The best advice possible would probably be to mm, make sure you always have a plan B and a plan C. It's good. It's good to have a plan A. It's always good to have a plan B and a plan C. Because I know for me in college. I had to change, I changed my major twice, or no, once. I was a business major, and then I switched to criminal justice. And I feel like, I feel like that was the best decision for me, because I don't think I'm a whole business person anyway. Like, when I mean business person, I mean like accounting, like dealing with like numbers and stuff that's that's not me i'm more i'm more so like management you can say so but that's why i just I went in that field and i'm possibly might get my master's too so still in the works but yeah that's that's my one piece of advice just to make sure you got a plan b Fancy. What's a piece of advice you give your younger self? My younger self. <clears throat> piece of advice I give my younger self is be consistent. Consistency is key in all things you do. And I feel like I didn't I wasn't really as consistent as I should have been. But especially my freshman year, shoot, I had uh, what, one point, one point something, killing me. And that that opened my eyes, cause I was just like, man, I'm over here wasting my people's money, fooling around. So I had to get right with that before anything. Now that you've cleaned your everyday shoe, how long have you had these shoes for? Like five, six years. Good God. So from high school to now. Yeah. How would you say you treat yourself in comparison to your everyday workout shoe? You saying like how do I treat myself compared to how do I treat my shoe? Mm-hmm. Uh sure, I be throwing these joints in the corner. I mean <laughs> Compared to myself, shoot, I be treating these jumps like they a uh, dirty towel rag. I ain't gonna lie. But it's like, they reliable, so. Shoot. They still be coming in handy. How would you say you treat yourself in comparison to your shoes? So if you shoes the towel rag, yeah. what's the difference between you and your everyday shoe in terms of treatment? Uh, yeah, compared to shoe, I'm probably treated like a king. I mean, you get to sleep in bed. I mean, you gotta say that over. You started in the yawn. You gotta. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> um, I say shoe compared to the shoes. I'm I'm a king for real. Mm-hmm. You can say because shoe you get to eat good food, mm-hmm. sleep in a good bed, and these down shoes sometimes they be in the back of my trunk, burn up. So compared to the shoes. Sure. It's king treatment over this John. Do you have a self care routine or no? Um, nah. Just wake up, brush my teeth, wash my face. Do you believe in self care maintenance, or you you think you're pretty good right now? Uh, I believe in self care maintenance, to be honest. But 
I, I I used to use face uh, face wash and stuff like that, but I haven't recently. So, but I do believe in face care stuff because I feel like for some people it's more so needed because some people are more uh, skin sensitive than others. So I feel like they probably need it more than I do. I know my skin is not as sensitive, so my skin doesn't break out as easily as other people. I know other people you 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 bite them on the face, makes you know they face all right. So. That's crazy. I'm damn near exposing myself. Well, you know, you said you're doing dirty as much. You uh, dried off those sneakers too. Yeah. I ain't do these. You didn't do those yet? Mm -mm. So that was just one sneaker the whole time? <laughs> you about to be walking around with one super clean sneaker and one super dirty sneaker. Let's compare this, them. This is about to be hilarious. Let's compare them. Um, face them forward. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, now turn them to the right. All right, now turn it to the back. All right, one hop this time. Is it dead my shoes? <laughs> <laughs> 